should they take the blood test that will reveal their fate. Jennifer Jones faced the same tough choice after her mother died of fatal insomnia. But when she met the doctor who had detected it, he was optimistic. Based on Diane's lack of family history of unusual neurologic disorders, it was unlikely that she had a genetic form of fatal insomnia. I asked him why that would necessarily be an indication that it wasn't the genetic form because certainly the, the disease would have to start somewhere. It would have to start with someone with one person's genes being mutated. I stressed to her that we could not be absolutely sure at that time without a genetic test. Before she died, Diane had given a sample of blood. Jennifer now wanted it tested for the presence of the fatal insomnia gene. She waited 10 anxious days for the result. The DNA study indicated that there were no mutations uh, present in uh, Diane's genes. It was like a, this great burden was lifted off my shoulders. I remember the relief that I felt at hearing that. So now I, I and my children would be at no further risk of contracting the disease. Diane was only the eighth person in the world to be diagnosed with sporadic fatal insomnia. Jennifer and her children were in the clear. Now Megan and Andy White face the same tough decision. They've undergone a series of tests to help doctors learn more about their rare condition. But they have one last task. They must decide whether to take the test, which will establish beyond doubt if they carry the fatal gene. It's the toughest dilemma they've ever faced. Being from a family with a deadly genetic disease, Megan and Andy White will always live in fear of the sleep disorder, fatal familial insomnia, that killed their father and 14 other close relations. Having a test to find out for certain could free them from that fear, or condemn them to a life waiting for the disease to attack. First up for the test is Megan. I'm gonna wash my hands. We have to be very careful when doing a genetic test. A patient could become depressed, not only depressed, it's possible they could think about suicide, about ending their life. I just can't watch it. Some people may not be emotionally prepared for the genetic results. <clears throat> In the end, Megan decides to give the blood sample, but not to know the result yet. After much deliberation, Andy decides not even to have his blood taken. But Megan and he both know that before long, they'll have to confront the issue head on. Getting married is probably the thing that is going to force me to really look at the issue head on. I wouldn't want to put a child through the difficulties that I had to go through, whether it be wa watching their own father go through the illness and then potentially them having to go through the same thing themselves. The only thing that would make me weigh my decision would be if I wanted to have children, which I do. Because I don't want it to keep going. I really don't. And I don't think anyone else should have to suffer it. Great advances are being made in the ability to identify genetic defects. But with them could come new problems. The goal is to identify the entire human genome. Uh, does that mean that if your genetic material doesn't match the standard human genome, you become uninsurable, you become unemployable? That's probably a radical slant to it, but it may affect your life, your employability, uh, marriage, uh, numerous problems. The good news is that research like that continuing in San Francisco and Italy could mean that even if Andy and Megan do carry the mutant gene, there's a real hope that by the time it becomes active, there'll be a treatment for it in their lifetime. The bad news is that with more diseases identified as having a genetic component, 
the dilemma facing the whites could face millions of families. We follow the fight against crime after the break on Discovery Channel and the search for those responsible for a bomb which killed a Chilean ambassador and his wife. The death of a diplomat in FBI files, next. <laughs>